Join us on the Swim Monkey. Swim. Swim Monkey. Swim Monkey. Swim Monkey TV. On the Monkey. All right. Here we are again. Sid, we're on the monkey. We're on the monkey, Joe. Look at the monkey tonight. It, it's it, it's awesome, and we have a killer show tonight, Sid, with, guess what, another Sid, Sydney Pickram. Uh, she, she grew up in Clearwater and uh, represented Canada in the Olympics, Texas a and as well. So welcome, Sid. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. And then, and of course, we have the legendary coach, Sid. We have the legendary Randy Reese, okay, uh, Olympic coach, uh, Gator National Championship coach, club coach extraordinaire, coaches all these great athletes. I mean, yeah, he, had the, he had the Jacksonville teams of great high school kids, like Billy Forrester, a buddy of mine. I remember the RRST, the, those uh, all, like really cool t shirts everybody wanted with the railroad crossing. I remember those days, Coach. Welcome to the show. So we've got Sid still still muted. We got to get Ann over there and help him, Sid. But um, oh, you, Randy, there you go. There we go. The 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 M U T E button. He's right? still he's still muted, but that's all right. Come on, Coach. Sam Purvis. Well, we got we got an SEC girl in at least. So LSU's represented already. <laughs> All right. So listen, we we have a we have great show, right? We have this great coaches. We have great swimmers. Uh, we have you, Sid. It's 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 really awesome to be here on another Wednesday's Wednesday nights uh, coaches happy hour. So pumped for that. I will say cheers. I have I have a little bit of wine here. Cheers, cheers to everybody. And if you're drinking water, Coke, whatever. There you go. I got my Gator. I'm sorry, Sid. Sid, I, I, I just there you go, Randy. I, I just don't have any Texas A&M mugs, right? But you know, this is easier to come by down in Boca Raton. So Keith, that's okay. Uh, don't tell anyone that I grew up a Gator fan. So uh, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. So Switzer, they're perfect. Where was this button in the '80s? I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right. So let's. I'm going to start Randy's this. Off. On. Let's hear from Randy. Can you talk to us, Coach? Yeah. But you want to talk to me? Well, the All first, right. yeah, go, Joe. The, the the first question is, Coach, in in your transition, you have all these all these accolades through the many years. I I, I looked up a couple of your stories, and in in an interview, I guess this year or last year, you know, you're kind of like, well, you know, my mom said I was a blue baby, I was probably going to die, so they let me just run around. And then, but the question I wanted to ask you about as an athlete. You were uh, you were never really given the chance to swim your senior year. We all know in Florida, you were Florida State Seminole as as an athlete. I, I think uh, statistics said maybe you swam the IM as the best event. But when when you were swimming for Florida State, something happened after your junior year, and your your uh, medical condition turned you into a coach. Can you tell us a little bit about those days and how you got started in coaching? Yeah, I, I basically just went through a physical going into my senior year, and that's when they said I had a heart murmur and that I wouldn't be allowed to swim. So I talked to Ben Stoltz, who was the coach then, and he told me that I could coach uh, the distance and sprinters on the freshman team. And that's the year in January they let freshmen become eligible to compete on the you know sophomore, junior, and senior level, rather than just a freshman team. So then I still coached the sprinters and distance kids when we moved up to do the varsity. So that's basically my first part of coaching. And so, so that's why he's so mellow, Sid. He's so mellow because of the heart murmur. So, you know, and, and, and Sid knows, and I'm talking about Sidney Pickham knows that when he says a set, he's very calm and he probably says it once. Right. Am I right? He, definitely, he always would write it down and I know what it says because I'm so used to it, but anyone else trying to look at his handwriting probably wouldn't. Um, but yeah, it's very monotone. Even when he's yelling at you, it's also monotone. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so, Sydney, tell us when you first met Coach Reese, what, what was your impression and how did you get started with him? What age were you at that time? Uh, I think I was 11. So I was in Clearwater Joe, for a year. Sound any? <laughs> I think I was in Clearwater like a year or two before he came. And then someone just said, like, this really good coach is coming. And I was like, okay. And I was still in the younger group, but. Pretty quickly after he came, um, they told he wanted me to swim in the high school group. And so I was still in middle school at the time. And I was like, if he wants me to, then I will. And so I started virtual school and got out of school early just to start training with him. And it's worked out pretty well so far. <laughs> well, you know, that the, the first time I saw Sid swim, we were we were at a meet in Clearwater. And um you know, we're just watching. I'm like, oh my god, that girl, that girl's got a good. I mean, you you were decent in fly. You, you, I, you've had better strokes, but I mean, then I saw the backstroke. I'm like, oh my god, that girl's really good in the backstroke. And then, holy cow, she's really good in the breaststroke. And then, and then, great free. So I was like, wow, that, so that I first time I saw him, wow, she's fast. And then Randy at that time, and this was six, seven years ago. I'm like, he had a bunch of kids there all training together, and that must have been an awesome time, Sid, to train with all those guys just hammering away and beating up each other in the pool. It was good stuff. Yeah. We had a lot, especially in my year, we had a lot of people around and that could put me a lot of different guys that I got to swim with, which ended up working out pretty well for my club experience. Yeah. All right. So listen, Randy, I'm going to tell a little story about Randy. And I know that Duffy Dillon's on here. Dady's on here. Um, Keith Switzer's on here. Uh, Randy always, uh, Randy Everett watches. All right. So listen, I'm walking in and a lot of people know this story, right? I told this story to Sid the other day. This is my first day of practice. And I've talked to Randy over the phone because, you know, he recruited me at Florida and all that. But my first day at practice at, at the Florida, at the Florida uh, pool, you had to walk through his office just to go back to the dorm. There was no other way. So I walked through his office. And I look over at Randy sitting at the desk with his mustache, you know, and his shit eating grin. And he goes, what the F you looking at? And I'm like, that was like the first thing he said to me. What are you, what are you looking at? And um, so I, I said, well, you're gonna have to be a little bit more of a, a smart aleck than that. My dad was a, a, was a big one. So that's ever since, and then he smiled. So ever since then we had a, we had a good relationship and it was just a, that's how it is. That, that's, that's how it is with them. Well, I, I know. I, I, I really believe that. I've had a lot of those types of conversations. Look like Randy is out for the moment. You know, Joe, I, I don't think it was your story. I, I know there were some, <laughs> there was something he, his wife was cooking and he, I think he's the master chef. I don't know what was going on, but hopefully Bess is getting him back on. But uh, yeah, I, I had some, some Randy stories. You know, I was lucky enough to coach in Tampa, Sydney, a little before you. Um, and, and I came down from Delaware in 1983 and coached for a few years in the Bay Area. And um, Randy was at UF and I had a really high prized uh, distance athlete I inherited that Ed Brennan had brought up at Greater Tampa Swimming. And I coached Jason Gorey. And Jason Gorey was in his high school senior year. And I said, look, we're going to do what the uh, Minuteman drill that uh, Bill Rose had it, had his boy Bruner do back in 76 and Jason did a hundred hundreds on a minute and he cranked down his last one was like 51 from a push. He was just marvelous, but he ended up going to swim for coach Randy and coach Skip Foster. And I, I had never been treated so royally nice because most of the coaches my age, coach Reese didn't, he, he would just kind of, you know, he had a job to do and he was, I think the word was brusque, Randy, when you'd walk by us young guys and we go, hey, coach, go, coach Reese, coach Reese. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, okay. And now if you were, if you had a good swimmer and you had a good conversation, then you got his ear. Because all he wanted to knew was how to make kids faster, how to get them to be faster. And Gory was one of the best. So uh, I do remember, though, uh, having some really good times during that year. My introduction to, uh, Florida swimming coach. So when you're recruiting, can you remember Jason Gorey? I'm sure. Do you stay in touch with him, Coach Reese? No. Can He's you hear me, Randy? He's frozen. He is frozen. Okay. 
Well, he's off again. Bess is working on him. Let's go to Sid for a while until we yeah, get Yeah, let's talk about Sydney. Tell us something in the New World Order. Yeah, so 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 let's talk. Sid, you, we talked before the show. We were talking about getting in shape, out of shape, where, blah, blah, blah. Where in the heck are we right now? Where is Texas, uh, in Texas, all that kind of stuff? What's going on? Um, so I had been in Texas basically when everything went down and NCAAs got canceled. And then I think a day or two later, my trials were canceled. And I was like, what the heck do I do now? But um, basically, we were doing everything that we could. We were doing just random workouts with the group that was still there. Essentially, a lot of our pros are internationals. So none of us really wanted to go um, to certain go back home or anything because we weren't sure where we were going to be able to cross the border or anything. So at first I was like, Oh, if Toronto's still open, I'll go. And, um, that soon not didn't become an option or anything. So we all trained together in kind of backyard pools, whatever we could do. And then basically when everything opened up in Florida, I just instantly texted Randy and I was like, Hey, I need somewhere to train. Can I come swim with you? And he's like, yes, I'd love to have you. And so I've been here for about a week and a half, and um, yeah, I'm here until further notice until a And M opens back up. So, so yep. you've probably never been out of the water uh, this long in your entire life, right? So, how far? There's no way we no would ever let that happen when I was swimming. Oh, no, it's such a long time. But so, in your opinion, and no one really knows, right? But how? How? How out of shape do you think you are? Meaning, how long do you think this will take to get back? I mean, it's like, the, it's everybody's question. I, I have swimmers all the time. They're like, um, you know, some kids are doing okay in practice. Some kids are dog awful in practice. You know, it just some, doesn't matter. It just no, doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But it's just like, I just want to know, is it like a month away? Is it three months away? What, what do you think it is for you? Five months away? I mean, I I wish I knew a time. I wish there was a time frame that I was like, this is my point where I'm going to feel better. But already being back, this I guess it's my second week, and I feel so much better than my first week. And so I'm just taking it one day, one week at a time. At first, the first week, I was like, oh, my God, I have to make sure I can survive doubles. And now I'm like, okay, I can actually push myself to some degree. And so I'm hoping it comes back sooner rather than later but you just got to be patient and just take the successes as it comes of what's happening each practice okay so so randy's back now and um and he can hear you so tell me a funny a quick funny story about randy and then we'll keep on with you and make sure randy's good to go here um oh i have a lot of stories (laughs) but one of my (laughs) Uh, like one of the stories that I usually tell everyone when they ask me about Randy and like explaining to him is that one, well, I have one good story where it's when I knew he was as good as a coach as he likes to think he is, is basically I was sitting there at a meet and we were like, he was timing doing splits. And I think she did like a 25. It was some girl on our team. And basically he was like, she's going to go a 53, seven. And I was like, okay, she dove off the block. Like, how do you know? And to a T, she went a 53-7. And like on the dot. And I was like, okay, he really does know what he's talking about. And then another story, which I tell a lot of people, which is about all of like, because people always ask about sets. And they're, when I, and a lot of times when I tell coaches nowadays, I swam for Randy, they're like, oh, just because. They know that's the one thing that's the best recruiting asset I ever had because they knew I could work. And then, but when we all, at one point, they just went through, we just finished a meet and doubles in the morning were optional. And like, we knew that, like we knew that the practices, cause we had 445 practice through club and we knew those were optional, but we also had a Saturday afternoon. And like, we knew for sure that it was not optional, but we were like, but he said like doubles were optional this week. Like, let's just play it out. And so 18 of us skipped that day and we all went to the beach. And on that Monday we got back and he's like, 18 of y'all skipped 18 days of hell. And I remember just like, I didn't even, I was like, okay, what does that even mean? 
And he's like, get in and swim fly. And I was like, for how long? He's like, just go. Like dead monotone. I was like, oh no. And it only it only lasted for about two days. But I think nine or ten people quit, and so he was like, "Well, that worked. I weeded out the week." And so, that is the like most defined Randy story. <laughs> okay, that that reminds me of this. Okay, my my wife Bess, um, she was ha- she's younger than me. She, she was having prom, and and I was a freshman at Florida, and and uh, and Randy, I don't think ever had anyone miss in I don't know years. Um, so. And I planned on driving back that morning, but there was no phones. I somehow my alarm didn't go off and I missed morning practice. Okay. And then I'm like, uh oh. So, so Randy and Skip, at, at, both of them take me into their office and um, they go, Joe, why'd you skip? I'm like, man, I am so sorry. I missed. I, 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 you know, I, I, I was scared to death. And he goes, all right, Joe, you have uh, two weeks of triples. So we did, so I had two weeks of triples at UF and it was morning, go to school, two o'clock, two to four, whatever. And then uh, take a break, a sip and go 4.15 to 6.15 with, with uh, the club team or whatever. And that did that for two weeks. That was, that was my, one of my Randy stories there. That one hurt. I probably lost 10 pounds. And I was already- What did you gain, Joe? What did you gain in self-respect and motivation? Well, he didn't want anybody skipping and I agree with him. So, I mean, I, I was like, oh, God, I can't believe I, I missed that. And I'm sure the guys were all ticked off, but um, I, I didn't mean to do it. But here, here we go. I'm still married. So, and, and, and Randy's still slipping in and out. It's, you know, it's, I, t- I just, I just text, I just text Kevin. I go get him to a, a better internet place in the house. Yeah. But, um, get him closer to that. That'd be all good. Right, so, all right. So, Sid, you, you're an IMer. Um, you do you train uh, predominantly IM most of the time, or, or what? What's your what's your week look like? I train IM all the time, and so right, especially being at A and M, it's a very IM IM program. And basically, how our week works is we go fly, or we have a AM and aerobic day, and then we're basically fly back, rest a free day, aerobic fast day is like kind of how our week works but even i mean growing up in club i always i think i became an imer just because i would get way too bored if i were to do one stroke all the time and so i've always trained i am especially now randy's like while you're getting you need to do all the stuff or you're gonna hurt yourself (laughs) so randy randy now that we got you tell us about tell us about sid if you've got a good connection tell us about sid and training how does she train Compared to some of your best ever ever people over your history. He's struggling. He's, he's a struggling dude right now. Randy, you got me? I, so Randy, I mean, you can, Randy, if you can hear me, you need to find somewhere in the house that's a little bit better internet-wise, I believe. You're like the, like, I can hear you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me now, now Sid, yeah. when he was at college and I was coaching at Florida State or he, I was coaching in Tampa, we, we would see Randy at, at a dual meet and, and he would kind of remove himself and sit at the very top of the bleachers and just sit there quiet and, you know, other coaches getting up and inspiring their teams and that kind of thing. Um, did, does he still, like, once you, in, in your years from when you moved out of your, you know, middle school years and started swimming for him high school through today where you're an elite you know, highest level in the world type swimmer. Do you, do you ever see him get up and cheer you on and, and, and like show some emotion or is he always kind of quiet, more observing and then talks to you later? Yeah, no, I have the most I've seen him is he'll roll up a heat sheet and just, <laughs> that's like the most like movement I think I've ever seen from him. But no, I mean, even like at practices, if, you don't think he's watching. He's a hundred percent watching, even though you don't see him moving around and actively doing it, but he's always just been kind of to himself at meets to himself. And even like when you walk up, you will never know. I mean, you, by the end of the time, you know, when you have a good swim and a bad swim, when I was younger and I was like, I don't know what he's going to think. And you would never know until he starts talking because he has the same face, whether it's good or whether it's bad. <laughs> You know what's interesting to me, Sydney, and we have you here this chance, like 
that demeanor, that type of coaching, one might also say Steve Boltman is guilty of, and guilty in a very positive way. I mean, of all the coaches I've ever gotten to know when Steve was growing up in Pensacola, I was in Tampa, and then I was in Tallahassee, and I always admired him. I got to know his athletes. I got to coach a number of his kids on some national teams, but Steve and Randy shared that, and I think of that that incredible coaching staff that's assembled out there at Texas A&M. I mean, you, you, you know, you have Jason, you have Tanika, you, you know, Jay with the guys and, and I mean, and, and, and Jay LaRue doing the diving. It, it's arguably the best. I mean, I'm sure you guys feel like it's the best staff in the nation, but I always tell my kids, Hey, if you're looking for a top notch staff. So, I mean that, but that transition, tell me just a little bit about, you know, between Randy and Steve, what are the similarities and what are the differences? And and I know those guys communicate for you, right? They talk about the plan. Go ahead and tell us that. Um, yeah, when I – well, basically, like, my recruiting process, a lot of people ask me about it, especially when I was on the team, and they would come in and say, like, how did you know? Like, that kind of questions that a lot of incoming freshmen have. And mine was always really different because I actually went out of town – from well july 30th was always when they could start talking to you and i went out of town i think like june 28th until august 25th and i was out of the country like i had a phone to some degree but not really because i was traveling and i remember coming back and my best friend had already taken a recruiting trip already committed to auburn and was already ready to go and i was like oh my god like i'm so behind all right and so Basically, I had uh, I had a list of schools that I'd kind of talked to, and Randy was like, "Why isn't A and M on there?" And I was like, "Well, they didn't talk to me. Like that would be really cool, but uh, they haven't asked me." And he was like, "Go warm up." And then he calls Steve, and then at the end of warm up, he was like, "He's gonna call you tonight." I was like, "Okay." And then that night, he called me. That weekend, I took a trip. That Monday, I committed, and so wow. that was basically my process of it. And at the time, Randy was said that Steve's the best coach in the NCAA and I want you to swim for. And I was like, okay. And so I basically took a recruiting trip to make sure I liked the place where I was going to live for a while. And I liked it and I liked the team. And so I started swimming for him. And Steve is, there's a lot of similarities in kind of the quiet mannerisms, but like Steve is just so like go lucky, so happy. Not that Randy isn't happy, but Randy, no. Randy, oh, hold on, Sid. We do we have Randy? Oh man, we just had Randy, Sid. We just had Randy. It so is I'm, a ghost, Joe. It's a ghost. It's like it's a, ghost. Ghost. it's a ghost. It's a ghost. So I'm I'm, I'm looking at Frank Holloman's question. I'm just curious, how much pool time does Randy have? And I think Sid, you were there today. I'm sure. Yes, two doubles. Two doubles. Right? Two to Elaine. Yeah. So Randy, we, gotta, we gotta we gotta grab Randy once he comes on. I mean, we got to get him going and see see what he's get him fired up and get him get him going here. But Sid, I've got a video of you. As uh, soon as Randy comes on, let's see if we can get him in a second, and then we're going to talk about. And you you know what video it is? I think the first and last one hundred. Okay, okay, I think so. I don't. Know. <laughs> it, was, it was it was from like Canadian TV, so it should be pretty I'll good. Find something. <laughs> All right, so let's let's uh, let's let's see if we can do that now. We're waiting for Randy. Let me see where the heck it is. Oh, I lost it. Stand by. Oh yeah, I think I was at. I remember that race. I was in the stands. Yeah, I remember that very clearly. <laughs> so do you get? Do you get? Do you get like really nervous when you're a couple body lengths behind you? You know, I got this. Um. Yes and no. I used to get very like very stressed out. And then I've definitely gotten more accustomed to it because I've been doing it for about 15 years. <laughs> but that race in particular, I was very nervous. That race was, I was so stressed out. And towards that second lap of Butterfly, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. But then I just held on. <laughs> 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's awesome. So, so in terms of training, and I, and I know that we have um, a lot of kids that train, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, Sid. Um, and I'm talking about Sid, Sid C, Sid C, um, and then Sid, Sidney Pickram. On your training, like how how inside out do you go in practice um, to? to be at that level. I mean, you're, you're at the top of the world right now and just so kids can hear it. Cause I know we have some listening. What type of training do you need to do? I mean, there's how uncomfortable are you, I guess, in workout? Um, I think it, especially when I was younger, uh, it used to be basically I could just push myself through a practice and get better essentially just trying to, do something that I haven't done before, just like going a little bit faster on this set. And I think as I got older, I've started to notice that it's not as simple as it was just trying to build up more and more endurance where it had to become super particular in uh, with techniques and uh, different type of sets. And with Steve, I do a lot of the same sets over and over. So I know what I've gone before to try and do a little bit better, but it's not necessarily, you can push a little bit harder to go faster. It's what am I going to do a little bit more? Am I going to hold, do one more kick? Am I going to hold my pull out one more second and things like that? So, uh, that kind of more specific type of training is what I've had to learn to do, um, as I've gotten older, but, uh, and again, I, I, now that I've kind of been in the club element since this whole quarantine, there's a, definitely a difference between going through the motions. And so, Um, it's easy to just get through a practice. And I think this is where Steve and Randy are very similar, where it's you, it's as hard as you make it. And so you can go through the motions, but at the end of the day, it's not what's going to get you to the next level. And so when you do those specific things in all of your training and just, if I can hold my stroke better and go this time, I know in the long run, it's going to be better. And so kind of things like that. It's, I'm definitely more uncomfortable than I am comfortable most of the time. And I said this to Randy the other day is these kids are going to learn how much they love drills because now that I'm in college, basically everything is very quality oriented. And then the drill, it's like, Oh, thank God. I don't have to like sprint everything. And you don't, and now I'm back in club where everybody does touch and pull like this. And I'm like, no, trust me. This is where you want to just work on your stroke. Um, so things like that, uh, it's, it's hard. I think trying to be, being comfortable with, uh, being comfortable with being uncomfortable is like the best way that I could put it when it comes to training. So Sid, I, I've been thinking about this and you're the perfect person for me to ask. Cause you know, I've, I've been involved in FINA for many years, so that's been a blessing. I've got to see a lot of the world champs and I got to see you swim quite a bit through the years. Um, but I knew you were a Florida girl and it kind of shocked me the first time I was like, Ken, now my full disclosure, my grandfather was born and raised in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, and he graduated from the University of Toronto. And so we've got, I mean, we've got that Canadian side, but when I heard you were swimming for Canada, was that a hard decision? Because, you know, it, it gave you maybe a bigger window to get to those world championship type events. But there's there's certainly the other. Hey, I mean, were you born here? Did you move here? Give us a little story. How was that decision? And was Randy involved in that? And, and how did it come about? Yeah, so I when I was so Randy came in the picture when I was 11. And so I think when I was 12, my, my mom was my mom was the swim mom, but not the swim mom. She was very involved and had a relationship with Randy herself, but she always kind of was like, you have your own relationship with him. Like you do you, if you want to swim for him, sure. If you don't, you don't, it's your decision. So she was involved to a certain degree, but um, at that point she was talking with Randy and he was like, Oh, you're from Canada. He's like, yeah. Like she's like, yeah, me and her father are both from Canada. Like we moved here, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, well, you know, she could swim for Canada. And she was like, oh, I have no idea. And I I didn't really know about it either at the time. And so um, then he kind of just was like, get her citizenship. And so then I got my citizenship when I think I was 12. And I started swimming for them. My first team was 2012. 
I think, 18 years ago, or eight years ago, not 18 years ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, really. yeah, you're that old young one. <laughs> <laughs> and so eight years ago, and then basically, I get the question a lot of, like, why don't you want to swim for the U.S.? And now, like, I, I mean, I would never, ever change, you know? I've done it for right. so long. The, the question I always say is, when you think of home, you think of your family, and for me, my entire family lives in Canada. I used to spend every summer there as much as I could as swimming would allow it. And that's where my whole family is from, you know, and and I would always be there in the summer and I would watch Summer Olympics with my family in Canada. And so I don't think they I mean, obviously, if I swam for the U.S., I think they would cheer for me. But in general, <laughs> I think of home with my family. And so that has always been such an it. it so it really wasn't a hard decision for me. That's and good. I, I, that's really good to hear. I and, now, and and as I understand it, speak. You don't get much more Canadian than the sport of ice hockey. And your father played for the Montreal Canadiens, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, he played for the Habs for um, about two years into it, and then kind of his injuries. He has more injuries than I do, and so he um, ended pretty quickly in there. But yeah, he did then, and so I mean, we have a lot of Canadian pride and. I definitely feel like I grew up in a Canadian household, even though it was in. Uh, well, well, I, I can identify. My grandfather was George McClellan, and he, in 1924, I think it was. It was early Olympics for winter, maybe 20. He was an opportunity to try out for hockey for the Canadian team, but he was really moving up the scale as a chemist for du Dupont Nemours, and that's how he moved to America. He came down. He was also a springboard diver at University of Toronto. And, and he loves swimming. So I know that's where our family got our root in aquatics. And Canada, of course, has always had tremendous pride in their in their aquatics. I was I'm old enough, Sydney, and lucky enough to have been at the Montreal Olympics. Do you remember a swimmer named Nancy Garapick? Did you ever meet her? Mm -mm, I never met her. She was a bronze medalist surprise for the uh, Canadians in 76 and just a little backstroke or small petite type but phenomenal athlete. And, but hosting those Olympics in Montreal, Canada did itself unbelievably well. And then, um, and then we came back again, probably when you were just a baby and went there for world champs, they did a great job for FINA. The, the um, opening ceremonies in Montreal were put on by uh, the Cirque du Soleil group. Have you ever been to any of their, their events? I know they, they started up there in Montreal. That's where and now they're Vegas. But if you ever get a chance, I highly recommend any Cirque du Soleil show. They have something in Orlando, don't they? If jo Joe's trying to get Randy back on, and that's okay. And and if he makes it good, hopefully everything's okay. I did see one of the questions up here, I thought, for you. Uh, there it is, uh, the transition to college. Can you give something to the young kids that are maybe juniors and seniors, or maybe they've already committed and they know what they're going to do, Sid, and, and, and now what should they expect as they finish up senior year and move into freshman year of college? Um, the transition is definitely hard. I think uh, especially a lot of Canadian swimmers, uh, the NCAA isn't as much as a for sure uh, route, but for me, Growing up in Florida, it was kind of always what I was going to do. And that's, I, I didn't really think anything of it. I didn't think of deferring or anything like that. And especially my transition year was Olympic year, which was uh, now I kind of going into 2020, I had a lot of questions from people. They're like, you did it. How do you feel? And um, I think at the moment, um, I wasn't super pleased with my results in 2016. And that's just me being hard on me. And now that I'm older and I can kind of reflect on it, um, I definitely feel better about those results than I did in the time. But at the end of the day, I, I did question, I was like, maybe did I make the right call? But I, I know that I made the right call because it's what I wanted to do. And as I've been through my swimming career, I figured out being happy in the sport is so much more important than any results. And I, I went through a lot of times where I, I wasn't happy. I didn't like swimming. My junior year, I actually quit for about a month. And I just was like, I can't do this. I don't like this. I'm not getting anything from this sport. And so um, that kind of, that was a question in my mind of whether I should have stayed, but I know I made the right decision because of 
I mean, I had all the confidence. Randy gave me all the confidence going into school. He said, I want you to send for Steve. This is what you should do. I think you'll do well. And he's a coach that had known me since I was 11. And then I was 18 leaving to go to school. And so really having that relationship with my coach, I think was the biggest thing. And especially with a reputation like Randy for people to say they have such a good relationship. People are like, Oh, but I, I truly did. And that's why even now I'm 23 and back club swimming with him. And so it's hard. It's definitely changing, especially because I was in a program for so long before I went into school to change the different type of style of training was definitely an adjustment. And I don't think I really fully adjusted until my sophomore junior year. But at the end of the day, like I, I can't, I can't go back on any of my changes on my decisions. And so I was super happy to be with all the girls that I was with at AM. And so I really have no regrets into it. And if that's what you want to do, if you find the team that you love and you have all the support from your club coaches and from your parents, I say all for it. It'll be hard, but you'll get through it. <laughs> Well, I, I just got a text from Joe. He said, I almost got him. Hang in there. I, I really, I, I watch you. And, and I mean, Randy's career was reinvigorated. Not that it would, but when you came in and started really hitting it big in the state of Florida and, and, and Joe says, yeah, I saw this 12 year old swimming it. And, and I remember watching you race as a youngster too. And, and it really brought life in, into Randy. And I, I think it's kind of, now he's in this, uh, you know, kind of like uh, almost elite level of, okay, this is my victory lap. I can coach, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm so thankful that a swimmer like you has come along for him. We all pray for a swimmer like you once. And of course he's had so many great ones when, when you think of the history and certainly uh, I know, you know, who Tracy Calkins is for, for a guy, I, I was only a year or two ahead of Tracy and, and, and I got to know her very well growing up and watched her. We had, we had a girl that it was a good competitor with her and actually was an American record holding the I am ahead of her. Um, but I, but I really think that the, the, kind of the legacy that is Randy Reese, Reese coaching. And, and at that time, I mean, arguably, has he talked to you much about Tracy? Does he tell you things that she would have done? Or, uh, we believe on many levels, she was greater than Michael Phelps in terms of domination. You know, she held the American record in every stroke and in the IM. So, I mean, that, uh, nobody else has ever done that. Does, does coach ever talk to you about Tracy Calkins? So it's really funny because – I don't think Randy has ever talked to me about her, but Steve Boltman. Oh my God. We, every single year for the past, I guess this is now my sixth year. So going into it, we always watch these videos of all the strokes and the drills. And every time without a doubt, there's Tracy with his old VCR he puts in and you watch Tracy and about her stroke. And he always talks about her. And so it's so funny because as much as my worlds are so different from club swimming in Florida, national swimming in Canada, and now at AM, they collide so often, like with Tanika there, and now I see Tracy all the time. And so uh, Steve loves Tracy, and we, we always are like, here's Tracy every start of every year. <laughs> You know, I mean, for a guy who grew up, like I had a high school in 74 and, and I went as an athlete to the US a swimming convention the same time she went, Bruce Furness went, Brian Goodell went, her sister Amy was there. I mean, it was like a very small group and I was just, we had the best time and it was like, we had just switched from AAU swimming to USA swimming. It was 1980 or 81 in Snowbird, Utah. And uh, she was kind of winding down but she was just such a real person. Then I got to see her in the, in the Olympics when her kids were real little and, and we were over there in 2000. Um, and of course she married Mark Stockwell and they're doing great things over there in Australia. USA laments that we don't have Tracy Calkins living in this country because she's such a national treasure. But uh, I, I've heard the argument that, um, you know, certainly the, the greatest female ever but possibly better than even Phelps, even though, you know, beating eight, eight golds in one Olympics is pretty tough. So um, I, I think the, the idea for us, Sydney, as we're looking forward through this COVID kind of thing, and we're going into the next stage is that a lot of us are going to be on different levels. You know, you, you're, you found a way um, 
when do you think is reasonable to expect if, if okay if, if everybody's back in September, October. I mean, when do you want to hit a big race? I know Olympic trials, of course, are a year away, but you're going to have some tune-up races, some pro races. What kind of events do you look forward to over the next six to eight months that you hope you can get to? I know you don't know for sure, but what are you thinking? Yeah, I think, I mean, honestly, the biggest thing right now is ISL, and I hope that ISL goes forward towards the end of the fall. Um, there's The plan has definitely adjusted where it was supposed to be a huge year for ISL, and it's definitely smaller, but um, I, I loved it. I loved racing, and it had a lot of the aspects of dual meet swimming that I had been used to, so I really did enjoy it, and it was kind of that team environment I loved. And so that's definitely a lot of tune-up racing. Um, I'm sure I'll do some in College Station. Um, and then Olympic trials. You know, I think going into it, it's going to be a long time, I think, till we're all kind of back. But uh, at the same time, I, I kind of I, – I was faced with a decision where, okay, I have a place, like, I can go to Florida, like, I can drive and go train – and I was like, well, like, I don't really know if I want to, like, well, I, I was kind of toying with the idea, but for me, it was kind of like, I kind of got, I checked myself being really lazy and I was kind of like, everyone else like kind of is on a break. So like, uh, and I was like, okay, no, like if you have the opportunity, like this is where you need to take advantage of it. And so that is kind of how I, looked at it as coming to Florida. And so I get the opportunity to start training more than a lot of other people get. And so I just have to take advantage of it. And I can't really look at like, okay, I need to get back to this point. It's, it's a whole different ball game now. And so whatever points that I get back to, I just have to push and be the best that I can be after all this COVID stuff. <laughs> I got that, and I'm glad Joe's back. But you hit the ground running. She's talking about, you know, hey, you're right. You can make some hay right now, and if people choose not to, that's their choice. But, Joe, um, any luck with Randy's technological challenges? Down there, the icon is down there. And then um, maybe started email address. Then what, what's going on? Here, well, Ann. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it's moving. In. At least we got Joe back in, in an audio. Well, we don't have his audio yet. We do have a visual. So so what, what I hear is like you're saying, okay, you, you, you're jonesing in your mind like it's been long enough. Nothing's happened at AM. and And you know what's crazy to me, Sydney, is that it seems like the schools are the last thing to come back and the kids are the kids who need it the most. They need the school facilities. They need the, you know, and, and they're, they're the least affected by this terrible virus. I know it's horrible and I get it. And then people keep going back and forth. The who certainly doesn't seem it's like, what's going on? We just want to swim. We want to get kids in the pool. We want to get mental health going. There's been so many great messages from so many athletes, swimmers included. Hey, you know, and so when I listen to you and you say, I just got to get to Florida, get going. And then that whole ISL thing, man, my kids were loving watching that. My, my assistant coaches, oh man, Every time there was a meet, these guys are coming in with the results. They're all jacked up. It, it really was like a big boost in the arm. And uh, I was talking to some coaches from Mill Atlantic Swimming on a Zoom call a couple of weeks ago. They asked me to come and talk to them about dual meets because I had had this big dual meet proposal before years ago, Mill Atlantic, USA Swimming, Florida. I just think that, that that's what high school swimming is exciting for. That's what college swimming is so exciting for. You know, there's there's a season. It's 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 definable. There's wins and losses. You go in the dual meets. It's exciting. It's us and them. We used to do that in AAU swimming before it was USA swimming in the Philadelphia area. It was called the PSDS League, and it was great. And and so these guys were talking about it and exactly what you were just saying. The ISL provides that. And what it provides more is money. You get money. And, and it's like you can, you know, if, if I'm 23, 4, 5, I might be able to get by on a little bit less. You know, if I if I check my ego, I know the kids that are in your class out of AM that went right into the engineering jobs are making X dollars and all that. But you're living your life. And if you love swimming and you think, I might want to do another Olympics and I can make some pro money on the side and I can get a couple endorsements more power to you. And I love the ISL for making that possible for swimmers. So tell us a little bit about your ISL experience and what you kind of see as a swimmer, even after you retire, what do you think the future could be 
for the ISL. Oh, oh okay. Um, for me, I, I mean, I loved the ISL. Like, I am all for it. Um, I was all for it when they kind of talked about it. And then after doing it, there's no way I would want to go through a season without it. Um, I, I And for me, I got recruited from a European team. And I'm Canadian, but I also live in the States. And so there is four American-based teams that I probably would have worked better with some of my schedules. But I just remember it was actually the day, like the Monday after NCAAs, and I was not happy with how my senior year NCAAs ended. I, It is what it is. I, I can't change it. There is goals that I set, and I didn't get to achieve them, but that happens, and they make new goals. And so um, going into ISL, uh, Rob Woodhouse, our manager for London Roar, gave me a call and was like, hey, like, I would love to have you on our team. Like, this is what ISL is. And he was explaining it to me. And I was like, I still don't really get it, but sure. Like, <laughs> and I, I didn't even care. Like it was some sort of money. And so I was like, there was, I wasn't looking at it. Like, this is my career path. Like, I just was like, there's some money in it. Like, this is so cool. And then he kind of lifts, started listing off names. He was like Adam Petey, Kyle Chalmers, Kate and Bronte Campbell, Cam McAvoy, all these people. And I was like, and you want me like, you're wild, but okay, I'm all for it. And so I got on London Roar. I then uh, a couple weeks later, he's like, hey, we want you to be a captain for London Roar. And I was like, what the heck? This is wild. Like, but he's like, you've done it on AM. Like, your NCAA experience will be really good coming into this. And I was like, okay, like, sure. Like, I'd love to. And so I went into ISL. My first match, I was a captain with Kyle. And it was just like, what to expect. And we were luckily like the week or two after the first round. So we kind of got to see on TV how they did it. And I was like, this looks so cool. And then it, and it was even more than I dreamed of. It was literally what you aspire in a team is just everybody to be on the same level. They, they want to be successful. There's nobody that goes into the ISL. that's like, I'm just doing this because like swimming's okay. And like, I'm kind of good at it. It's like, no, these people desire to be the best in the world. And you're surrounded by all of that positive energy of people just wanting to basically make history in swimming. And that's what we were doing in the ISL. And so to be part of that was unreal uh, to go to the final in Vegas. My brother has the reason I started swimming is because my brother swam summer league and he's older than me. And I just wanted, I basically wanted to be my brother when I was younger. I cut my hair like him. I wore his clothes basically. So oh, yeah. I started, swimming. I, I was everything. And so he came to my ISL meet in Vegas and he's like, I've been to so many of your swim meets and nothing has ever been like this. Like never have I walked through a casino to go into your meet and just going to Vegas and all the lights. And he was like, I didn't even care who won. I was so excited for them. And then at the end he was like, those skins races, London roar, they got gypped. This isn't fair. Like just getting so into it. And like, that's what swimming really needed. And so I love ISL. I'm all for it. I hope even though it's modified, it still goes off this year. And um, for many years to come. And it really did create a longevity in the sport that you didn't always have before. And so, yes, go, trying to be essentially trying to be top level countries like an American swimmer and trying to create a 15 year, 16 year, three Olympic cycle career is really difficult. And then now looking at it with ISL, it's way more possible and to make a career out of it. And so Yes, I finished college and everyone's like, what are you doing now? And I was like, I'm going to swim as long as I can. <laughs> and that's basically my answer. But now it's actually possible, which is really nice. Well, I, I mean, and, and Randy's still working. Trust me. I, I have Ann on the phone right here next to me. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I, I, sh I you know, I, it's four things. We're going to have to have them on again, uh, Sid, on your Monday night or on a Wednesday. But and, and they're still working. So there may there may be time here in the next 11 minutes. But um, ISL. Um, uh Phenomenal. I think it's kind of awesome. And, and Sid and I have been waiting for years for this to happen. Um, and, and we oh, haven't had call yet. You get, you get a billionaire who can do it. That's great. And the commitment, Joe, what do you, what do you see though? Where, where can we go in the future with it? Well, I think it's, you know, it's like Tesla, right? Tesla started the car and did the, and did the rockets and everything. Well, it took, it took this guy to do ISL and blow it up so freaking big 
that everybody was like, oh my God, we've been here. We've been down here sucking our thumbs for freaking 10 years. What the hell's going on? So now hopefully USA swimming, Canada swimming, Australian blow this thing up and, and make a, 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 a make it entertainment value where you walk in, you get some popcorn and you, you know, you, it's an event you go to, you know, there, there's, there's still some politicking going on, you know, because Dude, it, who cares, who cares about the damn politicking, just have the damn meat and make it a good time. Yeah. I mean, right. And right. I mean, I'm saying Charles Barkley would be great. I'd love to see him. He could do a meet and we'll get him out there. We, we might be able to get him on a show, but you know, Joe. Hey, hey, hey! You've got Santo Condarelli, another Canadian who trained in Florida, and his entertainment values telling everybody he's number one, or telling his dad he's number one when he gets on the block. You know, so I mean, it's there's some entertainment here. We have entertainers. I know, I know, and and Sydney. So you guys are traveling more like rock stars when you go on with this team, and now you go to London. London's such a cool city, a worldwide city to represent. And for the rest of your life, it's like you'll be able to, you know, go into a pub there, like, you, you know, just like the English uh, the, uh, soccer players, football players. You know, you can put your picture up. Yeah, I was captain of the Aurora during their first year, you know, and you put it, you know, hey, can I get a pint? Bait? You know, it's that kind of thing. It's your, it's like a, a an adopted hometown, right? Do you like London? Yeah, the first time that I had ever been was for our match in London. And I was like, I'm so excited for our home meet, even though I've never been there before. But it really did feel like that. And it was so cool to be there. And especially like I remember watching the London Olympics. And so to also be at that pool to for that match. And like that was actually my first ISL win was in London. And it was so like that's I don't really remember a lot of races. I learned I remember some, but I remember winning in London just because of how insane the crowd was. They were amazing. And I hope we get back there very, very soon. And then also winning like at ISL final in Vegas was just insane just because of the atmosphere. And like I I mean, I can maybe remember like three races from my NCAA career. I don't really like they happened. Like, yes, I'm proud of some of them, but it was just a stepping stone. But like, I will forever remember those because of the atmosphere that ISL had created. That's cool. Well, educate us on how does your contract work? Like you go back to London Roar, do they invite some people that, that don't want to go back? Everybody has to go. You, you sign for more than, how does that work? So actually for it, it had one way and then had kind of changed because of COVID. And so I, um, going into this season, basically they kind of asked, um, there was a couple, there was a window because of adding the new teams. Um, there's a window where they could say, Hey, like the other teams are recruiting right now. Like I can't officially ask you to be back on the team. But um, this is we basically Rob was like, I want to sign you. I can't right now. They're going to try and ask you the other teams probably. But come this date, like I can ask you. And I and for me, like I, it was hard because Canada did bring a team into play. And that was definitely on my radar. Obviously, it, with the whole schedule, it kind of made a lot more sense sense in some degree to go with Canada because it was a more North America travel and um, I'm Canadian. But for me, like I loved London Roar. And so I told Rob very quickly that that was definitely the way I wanted to go. And so um, come this season and then kind of when COVID happened, it changed a bit. And so for us, when I was, so since I was a captain last year and going into this year, um, kind of still in a bit of the leadership role. I had a lot of conversations and um, we were kind of seeing where it was going. And so it, I, I can't remember exactly what it was called, but it was basically, if nothing goes, if you're signed onto a team this year, we still will help your funding, which is a huge thing because it just is giving us still the possibility to have a career in swimming, which had never been created before. And going into it, ISL literally said, hey, we want you to keep swimming. We want you to keep going. And even if COVID, you can't race, we're still going to make sure we fund you to some degree because you signed for us. You're on our team. And so it's just like another reason why I loved it so much. And 
hopefully everything goes off uh, this year to some degree. I know some a bit about what their plan is, but I don't know what all is going to go into action. And I don't know everything that's been released either. But like technically, I don't think I've been released on London Roar. But right, you so guys hear it here first. <laughs> you're you're on London Roar, right? You're that that's your team. So yes. you practiced your accent. Can I hear a little bit of like oh. English accent? Oh no, I I can't like we've had to do some, I, I have no accents at all, but we've had to do some videos basically of us like chanting because we have our chants that we made and it's like us talking into our phone and I was recording them and I remember my roommate was like what the heck are you saying? And I'm just like screaming roar. And she was like, what is going on? And, so, and they're like, trust me when they're edited, they're going to look good. And I'm like, please let them look good because this does not look good. <laughs> right, wait, no, wait, no, we'll do a little, we'll do a little audio follow here. So Sid, give us oh, your British accent. Step in time. Oh, step in time. Oh, it's the master <laughs> step in time. That's about okay, so Sid, go ahead. Oh. And, and do your best effort. You know that, I, uh, I'm trying to. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about Sid. Sid Baker. Oh do yeah, we're here. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think of. There's some words more the words that they say that I'm like, what are you saying? Like they, I'm pretty sure they call. Oh, you're. I can't. So we have a lot of Aussies. A lot of Brits. And Aussies and Brits have some of the weirdest lingo. And so, like, your suit, they'll call a cozy. I think that's Australian, though. Like, a costume, but it's a cozy. And then uh, some other things. They always say rubbish. Um, Do you I'm mind the gap? Think. Sorry? Mind the gap. Mind the gap. Yeah. <laughs> they, I just, I don't know. I have no British accent at all, but I have some of their lingo. <laughs> that's it. Well, at least Sam Purvis knows I was talking about the, uh, you know, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. You know, Mary Poppins. Well, listen, so, Sid, I, thank you for, for carrying. I'm talking about bullshit. This is Sid Square, okay? Thank you for carrying the show, okay? It's like, where the hell's Randy? And, and by the way, guys, I know that uh, half the show is Randy, half the show is Sid. Randy, his wife goes, we're going to have to come back on, on Sid's show on Saturday or, I mean, on Monday or uh, then another, another Wednesday show, but Sid, you're awesome as, as usual. I, I, we certainly wish you a, a ton of luck. And now that you don't have the distraction of school, you can kick everybody's tail and go sub four thirty in the 400 I am. Um, am I right, Sid? And I'm talking about both Sid's, right? We're going under, yeah. four, right? I'm hoping so for sure. I mean, come on. I mean, now that we have, we can concentrate, you know, so we're not, we don't have like, we don't have like split concentration here. We have full on, I'm going to kick some butt. And yeah, I've been around since I was 12, you know, <laughs> now it's time. And, and I will tell you, and, and this is, I've, I've read a lot about this, the cardiovascular strength for a male and a female is in the 32 to 33 range. So you've got a long way to go, a long way to go. I mean, you don't see a marathoner. How old are you, Sid? 21 or two? Three. Okay, 23. Okay, 23. So you don't see marathoners winning at 23. You see them winning at 32. So you could go to three three more Olympics and, and uh, carry the flag in for Canada and you know, do the whole deal, you know, maybe break a world record. I mean, what the hell? Right. Mine as well. <laughs> and, and by then, Sid, the ISL is going to be giving out million, one point five a year. You know, you, you'll be a captain for eight, ten years, and you, you know, you, you just think how fit you'll be at thirty three. And you will pick I up the accent. for it. And you will pick up the accent. You'll be like, call. I, I, uh, 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 I forget. Literally, I, I literally <laughs> I went very fast on that. Anyway, whatever. Neil Studd said, "Hello, Governor." Oh, there, there's Neil. Neil Stutch, come on. Oh, it's too late now, but Neil Stutch, come on and give us the accent. He's got a little bit going. But anyway, guys, uh, again, Sid Squared, uh, appreciate both you guys. You're awesome. Um, Sid, I will see you around up probably in, in uh, next couple of weeks, three weeks, maybe at a meet or something. I don't know. But um, before you leave to go back to Texas, I don't know. But um, anyway, Sydney, let me just say uh, it's been a true pleasure to get to know you better tonight and um, really appreciate your time. 
and and just your whole you know vibe you, you really bring a lot to the show with or without randy and, and it really has brightened up our day so thank you very much thank you so much for having me on the monkey yeah. on the monkey so guys listen <laughs> We have a lot of shows on the monkey. We have uh, Lean Green Dad coming up. We have uh, Kara's uh, Seahorse, Seahorse Tales, right? We have we have stories with Sid. Um, what have I missed? We've, we missed? We have cool tools coming cool up. We have tools. a lot of things for you coaches and swimmers to look at. So make sure you look at our whole lineup. It's a lot of great stuff coming. Hey, Sid, uh, Cassidy, we even have a diving show coming up. So a lot of great stuff. Um, anyway. Sidney Pickram, thank you very much. And uh, Sid Cassidy, we'll see you in a couple days. And uh, we'll see you next time on The Monkey. Join us on The Swim Monkey. Swim. Swim Monkey. Swim Monkey. Swim Monkey TV. On The Monkey. <laughs> <laughs>